In this video, how to brew poor. We will show you three different methods to brew poor tea so that you can choose the best one for your tea moment. Let's get started. Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nannoshan, where we share the pleasure of drinking and discovering genuine farm tea. Today I am uh, with Sigi. Hello. Thank you Sigi for hosting uh, this video today. I just traveled over to Bayer, to Southern Bayer, where Sigi is living. And uh, I brought with me camera, some teas. It is, it was a trip, a weekend actually, to just <laughs> record videos. So this is the very first one that we're going to record today. And what we choose, guess what, with Sigi Poor. Today, Sigi, we want to show different methods of brewing poor. So this video is mainly for those of you that are doing the first step in the world of poor and they don't have a real, a good idea on how to steep that. Or maybe you tried steeping the poor and it was extremely bitter, extremely strong, something you don't like, and you don't really understand why people out there on the web are so enthusiastic about poor, <laughs> right? Like we are, actually. So we want actually to show you that there are good reasons for being enthusiastic about poor. But first of all, Sigi, we have different type of poor, actually, that differ quite a lot one from each other, although mm -hmm. everything is called poor. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. So... Poor is yeah a really wide range of teas. Um, I think kind of the the thing that ties them all together is that they are from Yunnan and from a certain varietal of uh, Camellia mm -hmm. sinensis, and uh, usually the way they're kind of differentiated is first of all into uh, ripe poor or shu poor, which uh, is the Chinese name for it, which uh, you can usually sort of identify by having very like dark brown leaves mm -hmm. yes yes that, that very deep brown color that you see either in shu poor ripe poor or maybe or in uh, one of the types of so-called raw or a shang poor because those are sort of differentiated by age and uh, mm -hmm. young uh, Raw poor can also be dark brown, but usually only when it's very old. Yeah. Think like 20 years, 30 years even older. And then there's kind of the a very different thing from that, and that's young shang poor, which is, I'd say, closer to something like a green tea. Yeah, also in color, right? So the, the cake or the loose leaves are really, really green in color, and they will turn brown and browner and browner over the time. Yeah. What yeah, um... so we've got all of these different types of tea, of poor mm -hmm. tea specifically, yeah. but how is poor tea commonly prepared in China? Oh yeah, sure. I mean, we know that uh, poor comes from China, right? That we just said from Yunnan. And although there are all these different varieties, when you go in China, you see how people prepare poor. There is not so much difference uh, between uh, a young raw poor or mm -hmm. an old uh, raw poor or even a shoe poor. They pretty much do the same thing all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's quite straightforward, actually. They take either an Ishin teapot or a Gwai one, they fill it up with leaves, or they put anyway a lot of leaves inside. Can be, you know, something like seven to eight grams for just 100 milliliters of water, sometimes even more than that. And then they go ahead and do very steep, very steep, very short uh, brewing, what we would call in the West um, flash brewing, right? Mm -hmm. So basically water in, water out. And then they do of these steepings many, like, you know, it can be 10, 20, even more than that. And in fact, uh, well, it is the case, Sig, right, that in China, the number of steepings that the poor can deliver or the yield, if you want, of a poor mm -hmm. is kind of a sign of quality. It's a yeah. bit of a cliche, maybe, more of a marketing thing, right? Yeah, at least like uh, when I'm browsing around uh, Taobao and various uh, uh -huh. Chinese tea websites, one thing I often see advertised is like, this tea can do 20 steeps or this tea can do 30 steeps. Then maybe the 20 and 30 are not good at all, but the good point is you can get a lot out of it. So it's more the Western idea of quantity 
enter in China. Well, if uh, people in China, but also in the Western world, are more connoisseurs, then they would tend to adapt the, the brewing style, right? I mean, to adapt it generally speaking, so they might not go for an insane amount of leave and just keep it very shortly, but also they might develop some skills to distinguish between certain type of pours and other, not necessarily between actually Sheng and Shu. I have to say, I don't differentiate at all between Sheng and Shu, but I may differentiate between different type of Shu mm. and between different type of Sheng. Yeah. But first of all, let's look at the basic. So we say we have this classic method. We can call it the classic Chinese method that we just said. Let's summarize it. Seven to eight grams of leaf for 100 milliliter and flash brewing and do as many steps as you can. Well, today here we want to show you two additional methods and I would call that the Sigis method and Gabriele's method. And uh, it's not true that this is only our method, but it's two different ways of brewing poor that differ from the Chinese method and that you can find mm -hmm. pretty much out there. Yeah, I'd say like if we uh were to compare the two methods we're going to showcase today, I feel like to some extent uh, it also might showcase a slight difference in like what we want to get out of tea and yeah. ultimately, as with probably any other tea, the kind of big thing is that once you're more familiar with that type of tea, you can adapt your brewing method to reflect what exactly you're looking for in the tea. Yeah, yeah. So what we're doing today is providing sort of a baseline for you to work from. Yeah, you can try both. You can try the Chinese one and see the one you like the most. And then over time, you will adapt that to different tea. But let's get started. We have here exactly the same type of tea. So it is a Dai 7542. Yeah. Doesn't matter if you don't know what is Dai and what is this number, but it is a very classic pour. Yeah. If there is a one poor company that the poor drinker knows, is this one, Dai. Yeah. And, and this is a kind of a famous recipe. Know, then it is, yeah. <laughs> um, it is a cake from 2007. So you can see, we can open it briefly so that you can have a look. We have already weighted it up, but you can look that this cake is uh, dark, it's no more green, but it's not peach dark. It's not super, super uh, brown, if you want. So it is in between. It is 15 years old, raw poor, shampoo. And um, let's pick at our differences here. So first of all, as you see, I am brewing in a Gaiwan and Sig is brewing in an Ishin teapot. So some time I also go actually for Ishin teapot. I, my favorite Ishin teapot is actually yellow, is the Duanni for, for poor, but that doesn't matter. I often uh, do that, but I also often drink poor in a Gaiwan. While Sigi, I'm, I'm very simple, I just use this. <laughs> that's it. So that's why we differentiate before uh, between the two. Then there is another difference is about uh, the um, quantity of leads, we can say. Yeah. So how much do you use, Sigi? So my, if we uh, look at it from how much per 100, uh, 100 milliliters of water, then it would be five grams. Since this uh, teapot is about 150 milliliters, mm -hmm. I've got 7.5 grams of tea here. And here you go. And uh, this is, a, in my case, a 100 milliliters guy. When I use a little bit less leaves than Sigi, I go for four grams. Sometimes I may also go for the same quantity as Sigi, but also these are like our average. So four grams for 100 milliliters, five grams for 100 milliliters. Yeah, we can already see like it's a fair bit lower than uh, what people commonly do. And we can already point out one thing here. If you're using a pot like this, it's always a good idea to uh, preheat it a little bit. Now, why yeah. is that, Mr. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, um, I, you see, I've done, I haven't done this for the guy one, but uh, the oh, Ishin wait, teapot me, uh, is uh, as a much higher uh, heat capacity is called. So he's how much heat you have to give to the teapot to bring up its temperature. A guy one is a thin porcelain. You don't need a lot of heat to bring it up. Well, the Ishin retain a lot of heat. And before it can retain that heat, you have to warm it up. So what is Sigi now doing is just warming up the water basically and waking it a little bit up. This way he will have also the water that enters and wetten a little bit the, the clay itself. And uh, nonetheless, I will also do a, 
um, the first tipping that I will throw away and I will not use. Do you usually use that, do that as well with your? Yeah. Yeah. So this is a common thing, very common in poor. So you would just wash the leaves one time. In case of very old tea or some shoe poor, people like even to wash the leaves twice or three times. So I'm going doing that right now. So just some water, not just a little, you want kind of to fill the guy one. And uh, uh, usually I would uh, tend to use uh, a filter on my pitcher so that I don't have tea particles inside. But since Sigi doesn't use it and I forgot it at home, I don't have one here. So I'm not going to use it today. Yeah. Uh, but uh, um, that would be also if you want a difference between the two of us. Sigi is more straightforward. You have actually a filter probably in there. Uh, it has like a seven hole filter. Those okay. Types. Okay. So there is a little bit of filtering. So the big, big chunks yeah. would not pass through. Um, in my case, I prefer to use a filter so that I don't have a pure uh, taste and the brew doesn't continue steeping actually with mm -hmm. the, this powder inside. Yeah. In, in my case, the reason I don't use a filter is because I like, first of all, I use a pot, so there is a bit of filtering there, like you mentioned. Yeah. And the other reason is that um, the particles quite quickly gather like at the bottom of the pitcher. Yeah. So what I do is I pour most of it out and then the last bit I throw away. Oh, Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and now we come actually to another uh, difference between maybe between uh, Sigi and myself, and that's uh, the steeping time. So I not... I almost use the same amount of leaves yeah just a tiny bit less but more or less the same but i tend to go for shorter steeping than sigi now another difference that you will find in poor some poor are pressed like this one pressed some other called maocha are actually loose and if the tea is loose it will release instantly its flavor while if the tea is pressed it requires more time so what I did now, I brew maybe this first tea for uh, 10, maybe uh, 15 uh, seconds, something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, in your case, you uh, probably do it for a bit longer. Yeah, I don't really time it. I don't think I've ever timed it, but I guess I'm somewhere between like 30 and 45 seconds for the first steep. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go in now. And for me, this is good enough. Uh, I mean, not good enough in a negative sense, <laughs> in the sense that uh, is good with uh, this just little steeping, but you see in the difference in color that uh, we are steeping the same tea in quite a different fashion, right? Yep. How it is, your uh, is still broken up? Uh, is it broken up or is still uh, 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 pressed? It's still pressed, but you can already see how it's kind of like coming apart a little bit. And you can see here that in terms of quality control at the dye, they have to improve. And there is a, a little hair. Yeah, 2007 was a bit of a rough year for a poor. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. So here is the hair of one of the employees of dye company in 2007, probably. Okay. Yeah, and... Um, we, yeah, we, we mentioned the different steeping and you will see how these evolve. And basically, I... Yeah, I, maybe I don't tend really to, to go for flash brewing, but once the leaves start really opening up, mm -hmm. there might be a few steeping that I do really with flash brewing. And I, how to realize that? How to realize should you go for a 5 to 10 seconds or maybe 1 minute, 30 seconds, 1 minute? You should actually base your evaluation on the, uh, on the taste of the tea of the steeping before yeah yeah because you, you can do so many steepings they the tea will evolve slowly and so if the taste before was kind of faint or was too strong then you what you do you either increase or decrease the time a little bit mm -hmm. and in addition to taste i think uh, texture is also a good way to tell because uh, at least for me like one of the reasons i tend to steep for this long is precisely because of texture mm -hmm. like uh, what I get out of the tea and I, I think you can even kind of see it just Speaker. in terms of the like viscosity yeah yeah and I, I see that point certainly maybe the reason why I would rather go for a shorter steeping is because uh, I 
I'm very much interested in all those flavor compounds in the leaves. Mm -hmm. And at least to me, if the tea develops too much strength and too much bitterness sometimes, that bitterness would tend to cover a little bit the, the, the flavors. Mm -hmm. And then I cannot experience them uh, that much. Yeah, the sort of uh, managing bitterness, I think, is really important in Yangsheng and like sort of medium aged or very dryly stored uh, Sheng. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, if you have something that's more intensely stored or a Shu Pua or a very old Sheng Pua, then uh, you can be a bit more flexible with steep times and they don't kind of punish you as much yeah. for uh, over steeping. So this means that if you are going for a very young shampooer, you want to be a little bit more careful about uh, the brewing. Better to stay on the short side just to avoid surprises. You can always increase later on. Yep. While if you are going for a, a, a very aged tea where all those bitter notes actually fainted out, then you can risk a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. for sure. You have some water for me? Of course. How do you like the tea? So far it's nice. I, I have actually had that many 7542s, all things considering. <laughs> so uh, this is quite interesting. And uh, I mean, it, it's a little besides the point of this video, but what I've noticed is that uh, like a tea like this in particular still feels kind of young even after 15 years. This mm -hmm. is probably a tea that can age for like 30 or 40 years and still develop. It was also aged, clearly aged in dry condition, we can say. So that's also a little bit of a slower aging. And what um, can you tell me about uh, the difference between uh, brewing in a guy and brewing in a niching? Uh, because we say that we, we don't differentiate much between uh, a post-fermented shoe pour or a raw shampoo, pour, but uh, uh, let's say that if I give you a guy one, would you use it in a different way? That's kind of... I think so. I think, yeah. I, I think I'd do something that's closer to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And th that's in part because of heat retention. I think uh, one mm -hmm. of the major sort of contributors to how this kind of texture presents in tea and why the kind of method I use works is that these Yixing teapots can retain more heat than a guy one. Yeah. And how does that influence actually your brewing? So, um... so yeah, in the guy one, I'd probably go for a shorter steeping time. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I think if uh, you, dear viewer, watch some of my videos, somewhere I uh, use a pot or somewhere I use a guy one, I don't think I explicitly mention these differences, but you might see me go mm -hmm. for shorter mm -hmm. steep times on mm -hmm. average with the I guy see. one. Maybe another difference that we, we can point out is that... Uh, in a guy one, you can very well decide how quickly you are pouring out your tea. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. Because we can open we can open the guy one as much as we want, and we can basically pour out the guy one within one second if we want. So, in an ishin, you are constrained by the little side of the spout that variates from tipo to tipo. But you can see in the case of uh, Sigi that it will take now a few seconds to pour out this tea. What does it mean for you? It means that if you are going for flesh brewing and you want to put water in, water out, you will never be faster than 10-15 seconds between start of pouring, uh, start of yeah, pouring the water in and then pouring the water out just because of the limitation yeah. of the teapot. So that's a consideration to be taken into account. If you don't like bitter taste, then either go for a niching with a large spout or go for a guy one. Yeah. And uh, one thing, so I'm going to pour this one out a bit quicker because after the first steep, I already saw the leaves opening up. And mm. when pressed leaves open up, you can reduce the uh, steep time a bit so you don't get that sudden hit of bitterness. But yeah, I'll count the second. Is that three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it takes ten seconds just to pour out the water. Yep. Let's take a look. What do you think? Should I try <laughs> Sigis brew? I recommend it. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. There you go. Let's see. Yeah, I think the leaves have. Yeah, the leaves have opened up a fair In bit your more. Your case? Now. Um. I, yeah, it's starting, but uh, still, uh, I have still a chunk here of uh, mm -hmm. leaves. 
Yeah, I, I for some reason I'm not sure why I also feel like maybe it's just because of steeping time, maybe there are other factors, but mm -hmm. in the guy one I feel like the leaves tend to unfurl like a bit slower. Ah yeah, okay. That's interesting. Not not sure I noticed that, but it's good to know. And um, maybe Sigim, mm -hmm. let's summarize the three methods and then we will give you our opinion about each other brew. So you're going to oh, also yeah, to I need try, to try right? yours. Yeah. So let's summarize. We say we have three of them. The first one, we call it the classic Chinese. You go for seven to eight gram for 100 milliliters. You can use both a Gaiwan and an Ishin teapot, but you want to go for flash brewing, which is a little bit more difficult with an Ishin teapot. Water in, water out. In uh, Sigi's method, you go for about five grams for 100 milliliters and you steep for a little bit longer time. You can go already from the first steeps to 40 to 60 seconds. Can I say that? Sure. Yeah. You just uh, go for lower time in case of loose leaves. Yeah. Right. In Gabriele's method, you go for about four grams for 100 milliliters and you do an in-between steeping. So I would say you start with 10 to 15 seconds. And now let's speak also about the evolution of the steeping time over time. Mm -hmm. To make it very, very simple, as the more steeps you do, the longer you steep the tea. Yeah? So the second steep is longer than the first, the third is longer than the second, and so on. But there is one thing to notice. If you have a compressed tea, then you have a higher steeping time at the beginning. Then when the leaves lose up, you reduce the steeping time and then you keep on increasing again. Mm -hmm. So you have to do that uh, little peak at the beginning to, to get the taste out of it. And now Sigi? Yep. I want to check he's not cheating, putting a little bit of his. <laughs> no, no, I'm playing okay. fair. Cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. All right. Tell me. So the first thing I noticed right away, lighter texture, lower uh, viscosity, but, and I think that's kind of the main advantage of steeping it your way, uh, I think there's more clarity in the aroma of the tea. I yeah. think it's easier to distinguish between the different flavors that are in there. In your uh, steep, whereas in mine, they sort of tend to blend together. And uh, to me, one thing that I like in his steep is really the mouthfeel. So that uh, thick, oily texture that I have in the mouth. The thing that I don't like, or like less, is the, uh, the bite that it has. It has a quite uh, um, present bitterness mm -hmm. that uh, certainly is pleasant. It's not a bad bitterness, but as you said, it goes up covering all those florality, I would say. That's quite mm -hmm. floral. It's quite a floral tea, and I can tell that it's floral here, but I'm not sure I could tell it. Uh, yeah, it, it's tougher here for sure. Mm -hmm. Like. This one, I would have said, especially in combination with that increased bitterness, would have made me think more towards fruity. Yeah. But in your case, it was definitely like noticeable, uh, noticeably floral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree with that. So with that, we hope we were able to give you a spectrum of how to brew tea. Go ahead and try brewing your pour according to the three methods. Make sure to distinguish whether your pour is a loose leaf or it is uh, a pressed tea. By the way, if you go for relatively cheap loose leaf shoe pour, you have to pay attention because in those cases you have even a lot of broken leaves. Mm -hmm. So tiny leaves, you have to be super fast. You cannot brew that in an ishing, otherwise it's uh, poa, too much. So judge also and rem be mindful to remember you go linearly up with the steeping time only if you have a loose leaf pour. Otherwise, if it is pressed, you have to do a little pike at the beginning to loosen the leaves, longer steeping, then you go down again and then you raise up. Yep. And the best way to find out is just to look at the leaves. Oh if yeah. they're coming apart, then uh, you can go down with your steep time.
Perfect. Thank you, Siggy, for uh, sharing your method. And uh, we will see you, each other. No, yeah, yeah. both of us will be hosting the next video for sure. Because after this one, we're going to, <laughs> we're not to record yeah, we, uh, another one again. We've got a bit of a busy day ahead of us. Yeah, we have a long, <laughs> long video schedule. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. And subscribe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and like and comment and all of that kind of stuff. Bye. Yeah, give it me. Ja, ist spannend, weil so ein Vergleich hatten wir eigentlich noch nicht gemacht, oder? Mhm. Also direkt eins zu eins. Äh, hast du noch was, oder? Ja, klar. Warte, jetzt kann ich es ja hier hinstellen. Ja. Während wir... Es äh... ist schon äh, interessant, wie, wie, wie stark unterschiedlich eigentlich die Artikel.